Welcome to this tutorial on learning modules, the basics. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a learning module in Blackboard, how to edit a learning module's properties, and populate the learning module with your own instructional content. On this example course, I already have a content area button on my menu labeled Course Content. If I click on the link to the Course Content content area, I see that I already have a number of learning modules created. But let's go back a step. Let's say that I wanted to rename this content area. Let's say I wanted to call it Course Units because all of the learning modules that I'm going to create are going to be labeled with the term Unit. To do this, I would click the Action Links drop-down next to the Menu button, select Rename Link, and simply change the label. I could either press the Enter key or click this little green checkbox to save it. Now watch what happens to this title when I click to refresh this page. It's automatically updated the title of the page to match what I changed it to on the menu. Now another thing that I see is because I'm working on a course that is based on a template, this content area has been hidden from students. Let's unhide it. I'll click the Action Links drop-down and select Show Link. Notice that that little gray box with the line through it is now gone. This page is now available to students. Now, I could modify an existing learning module, but in this tutorial I want to show you how to create one from scratch. So, I'll click the Build Content button and select Learning Module. I'm going to name this learning module Unit 1 Test Module, just so we can differentiate it. Next, I'll scroll down and I could put in a short description of the learning module here. I've entered some text that says this is where an instructor can type a short description of what students will find in the learning module. Now, I'll continue by scrolling down a little bit further. By default, the availability setting for this learning module is set to Yes. You can select date and time restrictions. In other words, you can decide whether or not you want students to see this learning module right away or if you would like to release this module on a certain date. In that case, enter a date and time. Now I'll scroll down. Under View, we strongly recommend that you do not select Enforce Sequential Viewing. You do not need to have your learning modules open in a new window. If you do that, pretty soon there will be a million windows open in your students' browsers. You can click Track Number of Views if you want. This ensures that tracking of usage of this learning module will go into your student tracking reports. We do strongly recommend that you show Table of Contents to users. For the hierarchy display, I'm going to select Mixed Letters and Numbers, which numbers items has shown. Click the Submit button. If I scroll down, my new learning module shows up at the bottom. I'm going to drag it up to the top. And now I've positioned my new Unit 1 test module up at the top of the list. This will make it easier for us to find it later. If you wanted to change this learning module's title, or its description or any settings later on, all you have to do is click the Action Links drop-down and select Edit. And then you'd have access to all of the settings that we just looked at when we created the module. Now, let's open our learning module in order to add content to it. To open it, I simply click on the module's title. Before we begin, be sure that Edit Mode is set to On. If it's not, you're not going to be able to add anything into the module. Let's begin by adding an introductory item. An item is a particular type of object in Blackboard that can be added to content areas, folders, and learning modules. You should always begin a learning module with an introductory item. To do this, click Build Content and then select Item. I've entered in the name of this item, and I've entered in some sample Greek text just as a placeholder so you can see what it would look like. Now you can simply click the Submit button, and you have your first object in your learning module. Notice that it appears in the right-hand content frame and also as an element in the table of contents at left. Next, I'll create a second item. This one will have my objectives or outcomes for this learning module. Once again, I'll click Build Content and select Item. 
now that I've entered in my name and the text describing my objectives, I'm going to click Submit once again. And as I scroll down, you can see that I now have two objects in my learning module and also in the table of contents. Now I'm going to upload a PDF file into my learning module. This is going to be a PDF file of a PowerPoint that I've saved with two slides per page in a handout format. This is the format that we strongly recommend. If you upload native PowerPoint files or Word files into your learning modules, it can make it difficult and time-consuming for your students to open them up. To upload my file, I'll select Build Content and then select File. Now I'll browse to the PDF file on my PC. I click Browse My Computer. You can see that the file upload box displays. I select the Anti-Invectives Lecture Handout two slides per page PDF. I click it and select Open. Now I can rename it in my learning module if I want to. Then I'll click Submit. If I scroll down, I have the lecture handout in my learning module. If I wanted to reorder the content in my learning module, I simply drag it and drop it into position. For example, I could reorder by simply dragging the lecture up above the objectives. I'll put it back where it was. Let's pause here and take a look at how my learning module appears with edit mode off. Notice that with edit mode on, each of the objects in my learning module is stacked one on top of each other. If I click edit mode off, I'm looking at this learning module the way a student would. I have the table of contents on the left, and if I want to, I can change the view of my table of contents by clicking these buttons here. For example, if I click the middle button, I can collapse the table of contents, which shortens the names of the items. Or I can minimize it altogether by clicking the Minimize button. To restore it, I simply click one of the other buttons. Notice that each object in the table of contents to the student displays in the right-hand content frame. Now if I click Unit Objectives, the Unit Objectives text will display. I'll click on the PDF file. Since I did not specify that this PDF file open in a new window, it displays in the right-hand content frame as well. Students can save it or print it, or they can zoom in or zoom out by using the buttons embedded on the PDF file. Do note, however, that there are other objects that can be added into your learning modules that sometimes open in brand new tabs or windows in the browser. For example, websites should open in a new window, quizzes will open in a new window, etc. If I wanted to continue adding new objects into my learning module, I would select Edit Mode On, and I could continue working in my learning module. In this video, you have learned how to create a learning module, edit its properties, and populate the learning module with your own instructional content. Please be sure to watch the other videos that will help you to add additional items into your learning modules, add subfolders, and other types of links.